Psalms 23. How exciting. This month, it's good. <laughs> I'll never remember. You know, Nick, if you didn't remind me, I'm just... <laughs> There's going to have to learn to just get up and go, I guess. So. <clears throat> All right, so we're in a series on the Psalms 23, which I believe is probably one of the most dangerous passages of Scripture in all of the Bible. And the reason why it's so dangerous is because it's so familiar. Everybody knows it. Everybody quotes it. Believers, non-believers, it doesn't matter. Everybody, and they all think it's for them. And what's dangerous about it is, it is not for everybody. Because if you can't say, remember, we talked about this, if you can't say the Lord is my shepherd, uh, then you really can't say the Lord is my shepherd and shall not want. That doesn't apply to you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. No, he doesn't. He's not your shepherd. Well, he leads me through the valley of deep dark, uh, the valley of death. No, no. God will be there for you. God will be there for anybody that cries out to him. But those that say he's my shepherd, if he's really not, he's not. And so what we're talking about is we're looking at this, remember, from the standpoint of a sheep. David wants you to get wool and hooves. And uh, you don't have sharp teeth. And you don't have claws. And, and uh, you are a little sheep. Today we're going to be talking about how to deal with stress. How to overcome stress. Anybody in here have any stress? Okay. Come on. And if you don't have, you will have. All right. Uh, this has been this has been the week from hell for me. I've just been just a week. Have you ever have a week where you feel like you are running around like a, a dog with its tail in its mouth? You know, or, or you're just you're you're doing an awful lot, but you're really not getting anywhere. Kind of like sitting in a rocking chair, right? I mean, it's just, uh, it's, it's just kind of been one of those weeks. So it's kind of a strange week. Some weeks are extremely productive, some aren't. But as we go into this psalm now, we want to remember where, we, where we've where we been, all right? And uh, last week when we covered the fact, I started out by asking you, you know, if you could be any kind of animal, what would it be? And we got all kinds of responses. I've asked that question over the years. And I've never had anybody, bears, tigers, lions, um, you know, giraffe, we had a bluebird. I think, was it Lila wanted to be a bluebird? No, no, Ava wanted to be the bluebird. Yes. By the way, you should have seen these girls dance. Uh, if you didn't get to see them, uh, uh, Michaela's dance and the three girls, they, they're dancing this, this Friday was just unbelievable. It was awesome off the charts. So cute. Little uh, Piper was a piglet. Piglet. And uh, she, she's a, she's a fire, they're all fireballs on the dance floor. They're awesome. So, where was I? <laughs> What's that? Oh, thank you. Thank you, son. Appreciate that. You know, John said yesterday, you know, all you got to do is look at your notes, figure out where it's by. I don't want to look at I don't want to have to do that. You, you, you got you guys. I don't need to. You just tell me where I was at. So we are all animals, but you've never, I've never seen anybody choose a sheep. Never. Nobody wants to be a sheep. No nation wants to have their symbol be a sheep. Right? And so we talked about that last week. And then we talked about how there are actually over 200 references in the Bible to God calls us sheep. It's really not a compliment. But it is a blessing. When you realize, when, the more I study this psalm, the more I realize why he called us sheep. We need a shepherd. We have to be led and fed and made to lie down and made to go the right way. And we have to be um, corrected and restored and all, I mean, the whole thing. We are just like sheep. And so, that's the verse we looked at last week, was the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And if the Lord is your shepherd, you don't have to want. You have all of you need, all you need. In fact, I'm going to read a, a paraphrase to you in a minute of that verse, which I think is really actually pretty good. I also told you about a little girl last week that was asked to quote the 23rd Psalm, she stood up and said, who remembers what she said? Quiz. The Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. That's all I want. And she said, Ellen. See, the reason I say that again is because I think she had it. We can spend weeks doing an exegesis on this whole passage of Scripture, but that little girl got it in one phrase. The Lord's my shepherd. That's all I want. And that's really what David is doing here. He comes in as a shepherd. He knows what it means to be a shepherd. He knows what it means to be a shepherd's son. He wound up being a shepherd's king. But he also knows, you know what? 
I know what sheep need. I know how much work they are. I know how dumb they are. I know how, you know, all the stuff about sheep. But God is my shepherd. And he knows what, he knew what it meant to be a good shepherd, because he was a good shepherd. He knew what it took. And so uh, we looked at all of that. But one of the things that we looked at last week, and because we talked about the secret of satisfaction, remember. Because when it says, I shall not want, it doesn't mean money, that we won't ever want money. There are times that a lot of good Christian people need money, and they're broke. They're busted. Okay? And uh, so they're... That doesn't, that's not, doesn't mean you won't have times of hardship. It means that there will be a contentment and a satisfaction even in the midst of a lack of things. You might be missing some things, but you still have satisfaction and a fullness that the rest of the world can't give. We talked about if you were to put a bird in, a, in the ocean, it'd be out of its place. If you put a fish in a tree, it'd be out of its place. You take a Christian and let him try to find happiness without God. God, we were made for God by God, and until we figure that out and He becomes our shepherd, we will live in constant want. It's that simple. Okay? So now we looked at a couple of things, and this is the reason why I think we're stressed. And we're going to look at some of the things about stress here in a little bit. I think they're going to be helpful to you. But one of the reasons I think we're stressed is because we are like sheep. Right? Now remember last week we looked at the, the, the three things. The Sovereign Lord, when it says the Lord is my shepherd, the Sovereign Lord, He is in control of everything. Now if God is in control of everything, He can control everything that concerns you. So when David said the Lord is my shepherd, he's talking about the God who holds the universe in His place. If the sun moves a little bit closer to the earth, it's going to fry us like a fritter. If it moves a little bit farther away, it will freeze us to death. He keeps it in its perfect balance. All the time. Keeps your heart beating. Knows everything there is to know about you. This great God. And we looked at the seven different names of God, remember. Jehovah Jireh, the God is our provider. Jehovah Nissi, our banner, which is our defender. You have Jehovah uh, Sitkanu, which was the, uh, if I remember right, uh, Sitkanu. Shalom is our peace. Righteousness. That's it. Thank you. Sitkanu is the Lord our righteousness. Man, we need righteousness. Okay? But all of the things that we lack as human beings, we can find in our shepherd, the Sovereign Lord. All of those things that mankind is looking for. Hollywood stars and everybody who supposedly has it all, right? We looked at the Good Shepherd and the, and the God of true satisfaction. So, these are the, the characteristics of sheep again. I want to give them to you because I think this is uh, where we're at. Sheep are dumb. Right? They're stupid. Now look, I don't know about you, but I could get a P I could have a PhD in stupid. Alright, finish this phrase. Boy, I'll never do that again. Oh, you know. Oh, so see, you're all going. You might look pious, but I know every one of you have got a point in your life where somewhere you said, Boy, I'll never do that again. Because you made you made a stupid mistake. We're dumb. We do stupid things. Now you can be extremely intelligent and still make a stupid mistake. Because it's just by nature, sheep, that's what we do. You know, it's like, I often wonder, you, these steep, sheep are so scared of every little thing. Jack Rabbit jumps out and they run for their life, right? And, they're kind of, and they don't really gallop, right? They have this little trot. And they're the little spilly legs, they're big woolly. And so as they're trotting along, hey, what are we running from? I don't know. I don't, Sally started running, so I started running. What are you running from? I, so they're, they're just idiots, right? Well, you and I are no different. This is the human race. What are we running for? I don't know. We're all chasing the same thing, but we don't even realize what it is. And I told you before that if you kick the person in the earth in the pants that's caused you the most trouble, you wouldn't be able to sit down for a week. And that is the truth. So then we said sheep are defenseless. Remember, they don't bark. They don't growl. You never walk up on a sheep and see them going down. They don't do that. They don't have any... You know, you look at those National Geographic programs and you see the snakes, man. They can strike or they can spit. Or, you know, like the cobra. They spit stuff in your eyes and uh, you've got skunks can spray. Even little beetles, they spray something and just about knock you out. Uh, you've got chameleons. Or, or chameleons are cool. How they can just blend in and all of a sudden you can't see them anywhere, right? Just, they've got these, cre these great... But God created sheep so that they have to have a shepherd. Without a shepherd, they can do nothing. 
Nothing. I know, I've watched them. I've watched the crazy things, okay? So we need a defender, and uh, we could get into that whole thing about how he is our defender, also our attorney before the Father, isn't he? Sheep are directionless. I'm giving you three, I'm giving you four D's about sheep. Dumb, defenseless, di directionless. They can get lost in a flat pasture. I've seen it happen. How do you get lost in a flat pasture? Sheep can do it. They can do it. Okay? Uh, sheep are dirty. You ever had a dirty mind? You ever had a dirty attitude? You ever had dirty actions? In fact, probably this week, you might have had a dirty thought. Maybe a dirty word. Maybe a dirty action or a dirty habit. Or, I mean, we all have dirt. And if we didn't, Jesus wouldn't have had to die. So thank God he became dirt so that we didn't have to be dirt. We became the Father's affection, right? So in short, having summarized all of that, we need a shepherd. Now the theme of the, theme of the 23rd Psalm is verse 1. Okay? And that is this one where it's, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now he takes all the rest of this, he's going to either explain it or amplify it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why? Well, because he leads me in, uh, beside the, the still water. And he, puts, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, what else? Why else? We, well, because he, and so he goes on, he explains and amplifies why it's an awesome thing that the Lord is his shepherd. And that's why we're examining this for ourselves. He's actually bragging on the shepherd. Check this next slide out here. Uh, I think this is really good. <clears throat> my soul, this is verse of Psalm 34 too. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. If you're going to boast in anything, boast in the Lord, right? And that's what he's doing. He's saying, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not saying, I'm the great shepherd of my life. I'm the master of my fate. And I am the... God is my shepherd. I'm a lost, dumb, little, stupid sheep. And I need a shepherd. And he's the one. Look at this next one. And I think this is just really good for us to remember. The real purpose of life is to magnify the Lord. What good is our lives if we don't... If we get to the end of it, we have to magnify the Lord. Either with our words or with our actions and our attitudes. And you magnify the Lord in a lot of ways. You don't just magnify the Lord by what we say. You magnify the Lord by when somebody sees, when, they, when, they're, when you've got a raging river, but you're standing on the bridge over troubled waters, which is Jesus, your shepherd. The world looks on and says, wow, I want what they have. If you're crying and bawling and complaining and throwing a fit just like everybody else, what good is that? And so we are to represent... Because remember, people will judge the shepherd by the sheep. Okay? So if you don't, if you have sheep that are starving to death and not very, not very well kept, then we know the shepherd's not too good as well, right? So again, it's, it was, he's bragging on the shepherd, not a shepherd. The shepherd. All right? Um, now let me, let me paraphrase. We're going to verse 2 now. Let me paraphrase this verse for you. It's out of the Good News Bible. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. Okay? And then we have the next slide, and it actually has the, I think it's the NIV version of it. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me. Now look, he makes me and he leads me. All right? He makes me lie down in green pastures. And besides still waters, and then next week we'll look at this in verse 3, that he restores my soul. Alright? Sheep don't naturally, they won't naturally just lay down. You may not know this. They will not just go lay down. They have to be made to lie down, and conditions have to be exactly right. So, uh, one of the reasons why we are so stressed is because we are so much like sheep. Now, how to handle stress. Do you ever feel like this? Uh, this next slide here. Ever feel like this? Yep. You're trying to balance the clock. You don't have enough time in the day. You don't have... I mean, some of you young mothers, I can see some... I mean, that's where we live, right? Well, God wants me to... Something happened to my pokey pin here. Um, something, uh, you know, God wants me to put him first, and but our money, and then we got to go to work, and i got to take care of the home, and of course, that little boy, and, and uh, this is just our life. Let's go to the next one, too. This is another one that kind of summarizes it. And we're coming up on Mother's Day, so I thought the mothers would appreciate this. All right? 
some people are like, you know, that picture's not funny at all, because that's my life. And I'd be my daughter right now, I'd be saying, Daddy, you're not even funny, all right? Uh, but this is, a, this is a stress, right? But some of us have some other kinds of stress, which we'll, let's look at the next one. And I've told you before, America is the only country in the world that has a mountain called Rushmore. Rushmore, let's rush. And we're the only race that as soon as we get in trouble, we go faster. Hey, I mean, honestly, and I told you also that if in the rat race, even if you win, you're still a rat, right? But you ever feel like that? You're just on a wheel, just going for everything you're worth, but you're really, you're not getting anywhere. Let's go to the next one here. Because this to me is what stress is, all right? Now, and this is, a, this is a slide I show in my college class when we get into stress management. We talk about time management, a bunch of stuff, which we don't have time this morning, but time management is a big part of managing your stress. But on the other hand, here we have a crank. Now, you know, you can't see it, but there's a crack in that eggshell already. And, uh, but you control the crank, or do you? And see, a lot of times, we're allowing somebody else to crank on us. We, the, we let them do the, you know what, you have a bad attitude towards me, so I can either relax, ha handle it like Jesus would, or I can say, and I feel a crack, right? My neck gets stiff, I get a migraine. Or, um, the workload. Uh, yes, yes, I'll do, yes, I'll do that. Yeah, yes, I'll do that. Right? Uh, sometimes we don't have a choice and life puts a little pressure on us. And so, who or what is turning your crank? What are we allowing to do that? Now, some of you have already seen this illustration because I've done it here. Well, we have some new people and I'm going to do it again because I think this explains stress better than just about anything I know. All right? All of us are faced, we get shook every day of our life. We get shook. <laughs> John's like, no, you don't. So we get shook. Now, I can honestly feel this bottle getting tighter. It's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. What does it feel inside? What do you think it's feeling? Pressure. Serious pressure, right? Uh, it, it's probably, if it could talk, uh, that's probably painful in there. And that's, it's not, this would, if I keep doing this, and everybody, this happens to you every day of your life. The cranky teller in the at city market. The guy cuts you off in traffic. Well, you dirty, rotten. Your wife balls you out. Okay? The kids are fussy. You're, uh, don't bother getting your jacket on this morning. Uh, don't bother punching in. Uh, there's a question in your x-ray. And so we all face life. Now, some of us just hold it in, and we hold it in, and we hold it in until finally I've had it. Let me just go ahead. <laughs> so if I do that, it gets on everybody. I'm going postal, right? And I'm going to take out everybody at the movie theater. Or I'm going into the school and I'm killing as many of you as I can. Right? And so, because I'm holding it in and I'm not dealing with it. I don't have a shepherd. So God gives us some tools in life. And those tools teach us. You know, I need to spend a little bit of time in God's Word this morning. Okay? Maybe, maybe I should just take some more time and quit worrying about things and pray a little more. Well, you know what? I am holding this bitterness, but maybe I just need to go and be more forgiving. Okay? Amy's like, go oh, get down in the car. <laughs> All right, so but you get the idea. We have got to learn to decompress. And God has given us tools. And one of the biggest ways is He's the shepherd that can control this. But we don't, we don't, a lot of times we don't let him. We don't let him do it. So consequently, I've got it, Lord. I've got it. Yeah, but don't you cast the twist on me? Cast it on me. Let me let me handle it. Okay? Now I can use you greatly. I can I can use you and nourish people and do whatever else. Not with pop, but you can, you know, get the idea. Alright? So how many, you know, because you're not going to be able to avoid this. Nope. That thing just got tight as it can get. Nobody can avoid that. But we need a shepherd. So what we're going to look at is a couple of tools today that I think will help us with this. Uh, we even have a name for some of our uh, stress and our rush. We call it 24... What do you call it? 24... We go 24... See, you know it, right? You guys know it. Because that's our pace. That's what we do. Aha! Ever felt like that? Some people are like, they're not laughing, they're in tears. It's like, man, that's my life. 
fact, that's even my hair. All right? All right, go to the next one. I know a guy that actually looked like this, and uh, Jake, you even know who he is. Your Uncle Phil. Okay, so we'll go to, uh, we'll, this is what he looks like all the time. But he'll go to Disneyland with his kids, and the only difference is he has a polo shirt instead of a suit. He'll go to Disneyland with his kids, and this is him. He's not enjoying anything. He's not relaxing. He's not enjoying his children. He's trying to run four businesses, and he's trying to answer everybody's questions. And he's a yes man for everybody. Is he, is he wealthy and successful? Oh, yeah. But his kids are growing. He doesn't even know who they are. So uh, it's, a, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a sad thing. One more picture to just kind of give us the idea of stress here. Now, I used this in my college class, and I might have shown it to you before, but you know, this, what this shows is that how we are pulled by so many different opinions in life that cause us stress. You know, you've got dad who wants you to get perfect grades and make something out of your life, or your minister who wants you to do something, or your teacher or your professor right now pulling on you guys to get good grades, right? You got the girlfriend, come on, let's have sex. No, I don't want to have sex. Or, hey, I want you to marry me. No, I don't want to marry you. Hey? Or, hey, I want to marry you. I don't want to marry you. Whatever. You're pulling, pulling, pulling. Little brother needs an example. Best friend wants you to go out and smoke dope and get drugs. And I mean, you're just pulled in every direction. Okay? And you ever felt like it? It's like I am being pulled by everybody. And, I, and if you're the kind of person like me, I want to give 100% to everybody and everything that I do. I can't give a half. I can't give 50%, 90%. I got to give it all. And this can be a very stressful thing in your life if you're not careful. So how do we handle that? Listen to this old, remember the words of this Alabama song? I bet you guys could quote it from my generation. I'm in a hurry to get things done. Oh, I rush and rush until life's no fun. All I really got to do is live and die, but I'm in a hurry and I don't even know why. The old Alabama song. Why? Because we're trying to keep up with the Jones. Stress is affecting our rest. We are actually working longer and sleeping less than we ever have. A CNN did a poll, and 59% of Americans said, we, we wish we could slow down and relax a little more. 59%. You say, no, we're caught in this, this rat race, and we can't even get focused on the right race. In fact, there was a lady that told her, she called the pastor, and she said, hey, I tried to call you yesterday. And he goes, well, it was Monday. That's my day off. Yes, but I tried to call you all day long. He goes, I, I'm sorry. He said, I was, it was my day off. I was taking a rest. And she goes, well, the devil never takes a day off. He goes, yes, ma'am. And if I don't take one, I'll be just like him. <laughs> we try to put him in a box. Okay? So here's, a, here's your uh, 23rd Psalm with a 21st century twist. Listen to this. The clock is my dictator. I shall not rest. It makes me lie down only when exhausted. It leads me into deep depression. It hounds my soul and it leads me in circles of frenzy for activity's sake. Even though I run frantically from task to task, I will never get it all done for my ideal is with me. Deadlines and my need for approval, they drive me. And they demand performance from me. Beyond the limits of my schedule, they anoint my head with migraines. My in-basket overflows. Surely fatigue and time pressure shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the bonds of frustration and stress forever. Stress is robbing us of our rest, and the lack of rest is increasing our stress. Period. So we have a bridge over troubled waters, and this is it right here. And I'm going to give it to you in three, three things this morning, because tucked away right here in this beautiful little verse, and it's so, it's, there's three secrets. Three secrets. Now, there's a whole lot more in this verse, but there's three secrets that I see on how to handle stress. First of all, let's look at the next. Yeah, there you are. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Isn't that a beautiful picture? But I'll guarantee you there was a shepherd somewhere that kind of made these sheep. Now, there's a couple of reasons why a shepherd will make the sheep lie down. One is because he's got to go prepare a meal for them in the presence of their enemies, which we'll talk about when we get to that part. Okay? It's really cool. I mean, it really makes this, this psalm come alive when you understand Middle Eastern shepherds. But he's going to make them lie down for a while because he knows they need to rest, right? And so uh, let's go to the next one, Hannah. It's just a picture of, uh, it's just a picture of peace and tranquility. He makes me lie down. It doesn't say he makes me lie down in barren grass or in dirt. He makes me lie down out in the desert. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's a sign of growth and life and nourishment, isn't it? Okay, so here's your first one. And in your bulletin, you've got, uh, these are 
I think I have these for you, and then you can put any points on it if you want to. Number one is the rest in the presence of the Lord. Okay, remember the shepherd. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to give you four characteristics of sheep. Four, four conditions have to be met in order for a sheep to lie down and be at peace. If one of these four conditions is not met, they won't lie down. The key to every one of them is the presence of the shepherd. Hey, this is what I think is so cool. All right? Rest in the presence of the Lord. All right? Here's the first condition that has to be met. Number one, freedom from fear. Now, we've already talked about how a sheep will, I mean, a little cottontail rabbit can jump out from behind a bush and stampede an entire flock of sheep. And again, they don't have a clue of why they're running. But this is a day and age when, when headache medications are, the, are the, the highest national product. Because we are such a, we are, we're, we're fearful, we're worried about tomorrow, we're shook up about everything, and so we're trying to make everything happen. And sometimes, we have to be made to lie down to rest. Have you ever had this? Has the Lord ever made you lie down and take a rest? Man, I remember, you know, I was always like him, you know, I was always strong and capable and healthy and man, bring it on. And I remember when I was about, I was probably Jacob's age, 24, 25. No, actually, I was about 26. And they said, you have leukemia. And I'm like, Alrighty then. I mean, I had no idea. I was like, really? How can that possible? Yeah, we're just pretty sure you do. Now, we'll do some tests, and uh, you'll come back on Monday. So go home and think about it over the weekend. Uh, but you're probably a dead duck, you know, so go home and think about it. So you go home, and you're thinking about it all weekend. And when I went home and thought about it, it was, all right, this might be the end of the trail. I'm watching a baby crawl across the floor, going, missing growing up. And it, it, you know what? To be, And I was so weak, and really what it wound up being was hepatitis from too much Tylenol, by the way. Do some research on Tylenol. You should be taking it, I don't believe. Just telling you. Just, just do the research. Do the research. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, you, you, I have this onset of the, this, and I'm laying flat on my back, and I can't even, I can't, I'm like, how am I going to provide for my family? Guess what? Our bank account grew, and I wasn't working. I have no idea how, how that happened. God took care of us, but it made me stop and think. He made me lie down, and I found there was a green pasture. I got closer to the Lord. Because when you are still, you will know that He is God. If you be still, you'll know that I'm God. Okay, so, there are times that you have to be made to lie down. And one of the things is that the sheep are looking for is security. Now, I think this is the coolest thing. This is called a sheepfold. Now, remember the verse, John 10, verse 7. Jesus said, I am the door for the sheep. And you're going, well, is He the shepherd or is He the door? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. He's the shepherd and the door. Now, why? Well, here's a, this is an example. If you look at this little, this is just made. They just pile up these rocks, and then there's that little door opening over there. But you'll notice, now on this one, there's a gate. So let's go to the next one. <clears throat> notice, who the, notice who the door is. It's the shepherd. Now, what's really cool is that you get, what's the message here? The sheep get in. He, he leads them in. And then he is the door. That means... Nothing can get in and nothing can get out unless they come over the top of me. Listen, if that doesn't light your fire, your wood's wet. You have, he is the door. There is nothing in my life, no enemy, no nothing that can get to me or hurt me in any way unless they go through my shepherd first. I am safe in his fold. I am safe in his sheep pit. Okay? And I just think when he says, I am the door, that's what a real... A good shepherd does not. A regular shepherd doesn't really give a rip. He might just put them in there and walk away. Then they scatter, or, or the wolves get in, or the lions get in, and they kill all of them. But not if the shepherd's there. He's in the doorway. And that gives them security, and then they'll lie down, and then they'll sleep. Now, I had to do this, you know, when Jacob was little. He was a monkey. I mean, he'd be crawling out of him. He, a little teeny tiny guy. He'd crawl out of his crib and thud. Be like, oh, 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 he's too little to fall out of his crib. And you go in there and there he stands. And uh, or he'd come out want a drink of water, you know, or whatever, 32,000. And one time he was crying his eyes out and I said, Jacob, and I could tell he was tired. You know how they get the little red circles and all that? And I'm like, and I just said, you lay down. And I put him on his tummy and I just put my hand on his back. And he did not like that. He kicked and screamed and squalled, but it didn't take very long and he was sound asleep. Why did I have to do that? Because I knew that he needed rest. He didn't know it. He didn't care. 
But I knew because I loved him enough to say he needs rest. And I had to make him lie down. Because your shepherd loves you and because he knows what's best, he sometimes makes us lie down to be able to handle the stresses of life. We're no different with our insane pace. And sometimes we just have to be still in order to know that God is real. So here again, the cure for this is the shepherd. The presence of the shepherd is what gives them freedom from fear. All right? They don't have to free their, feel, um, be afraid of their enemies or anything else. Uh, ever talk to somebody that's had a heart attack a year later? After they had the heart attack, you talk to them a year later? You ever talk to them? It's like, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. That was the best thing that ever happened to me. Why? Because it made me stop, look, and listen. It made me really focus on what was most important in my life. All right, so um, what's the pasture land of your life like? Just ask this question. It really depends on the owner that you have. If you have a good shepherd, it's going to be green. If you don't, it's going to be barren, and it's going to be missing a lot of things. Second thing the sheep have to do in order to be able to lie down and not have fear, or to be at peace, is they have to have a freedom from friction. Uh, next slide there, Hannah. Uh, they're in the animal kingdom, you know, with chickens, it's called the pecking order. They'll take the little old barnyard speckled bitty man and they'll pull her tail feathers out. The little chicken will walk across the barnyard with their little bare rear end sticking out, and, or the rooster even. They just tear his tail feathers out of him, right? Some of us husbands, you can relate to that? Right? Come on. So, but you know what? They just pick on each other, right? Picking. In the cows, it's a hoarding order. But with sheep, it's called the budding order. And sheep will not lie down and they will not be at peace if they're constantly fighting to be the top sheep. And there's actually a, an advantage to being the bottom sheep. And the bottom sheep is, hey, I don't have to fight for any rank. I just want to lay down and eat and chew my cud. Right? And so as long as you're butting heads with somebody, whether it's a mate or a fellow church member or your boss, you are not going to be enjoying the green pastures that God wants you to have because there's friction Interesting, isn't it? What do we do for friction? We put oil on it. We put oil in the engine. When there's friction, when something's going two separate directions and you put oil between them, it's, there's no friction, right? And it makes it smooth. And so what is that oil? Because the Bible says, remember, there's, there's this verse, He anoints my head with oil. Well, there's another verse here, I think. Or is that picture next? What's next? Yep. Show that one if you will. Yeah. We'll talk more about this when, it, when we get into the He anoints my head with oil. Why do they do that? All right. Why do they do that? There's a reason for it. All right. But um, the oil of the Holy Spirit, right? That's why oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. The more Holy Spirit control in your life, the less friction you're going to have. It's just that simple. The third thing. Oh, and by the way, when my eyes are on the Master, they're not on the faults of others. Let me say it again. When my eyes are on the master, they're not on the faults of everybody else around me, right? Well, I've got a loser for a husband. Well, maybe instead of focusing on all his losing things, you should be focusing on your good shepherd. The third thing is freedom from parasites. See, sheep will wander around, and they will drink out of potholes, muddy water, a hoof print. They will drink out of anything. They pick up liver flukes, nematodes, um, all kinds of different uh, bacteria and, and parasites. So they, they have to be free from parasites in order to be at peace and to lie down. They won't lie down as long as they're bothered by these things. Nasal flies, bot flies, warble flies, they're all over their heads. And that's one of the reasons why they, the shepherd anoints their heads because it's an ointment that acts like a, a repellent. Okay? And it keeps these things from bugging them. You ever have somebody say, hey, friend, what's bugging you? Right? Or, uh, well, you know, this, I got a boss, man, that guy bugging me. What are your bugs? Because God has anointed you with the oil of the Holy Spirit. And He wants to take the friction out, but we have to let Him have control. Alright, so, um, and again, the cure for this being bugged and the anointing is the presence of the shepherd. Now the second thing for dealing with stress in this passage is to rely on the provision of the Lord. Okay, so we have the presence of the Lord and then the provision of the Lord. The next thing is the sheep have to have a freedom from hunger. And we all know what that's like, what it's like to be hungry. You can't relax. You can't. Remember I told you halt, H-A-L-T? And I had an S, halts. Okay? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, stress. When you have those things, that's when the devil attacks your life. 
Okay? Hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or stressed. And we all know what it means to be hungry. Now, I, I was thinking this weekend about how, how I used to love to go to Grandma's house, man. I mean, Grandma, because my mom never, the breakfast I got was a, you know, maybe a piece of toast and a bowl of cereal or a Pop-Tart or whatever, if you can call that nutrition, all right? And so, but when I went to Granny's house, fried potatoes, and I, I mean fried everything, pans of cinnamon rolls. I had my first heart attack when I was four. It was worth it. It was worth it, I'm telling you. I mean, but you know, you know what it's like to go to Granny's house and eat. But when we, when we're full, when you're full, uh, I mean, look at these, look at these sheep. Look how peaceful they are. They're just laying in this green meadow, right? They're not hungry. What are they doing while they're there? Green requires a lot of hard work, by the way. What are they doing? They're chewing their cud. And we're going to talk about that here real quick. Third thing. This is the last one. Oh, and by the way, while they're laying down and they're chewing their cud, that's when the most growth takes place in the sheep. If they're up running around and burning off all their calories and they're scared, when they're made to lie down, they eat, they chew, they get up, they've grown. They've gotten stronger, their wool has gotten fuller, their milk is better, everything is better. You study the life of sheep and you'll see what I'm telling you is the truth. So that's when the most growth takes place. It's not when they're busy, but when they're laying down and they're relaxing. Okay? Interesting. Be refreshed with the peace of the Lord. So we have, we have the presence of the Lord, the provision of the Lord, and now we have the be refreshed with the peace of the Lord. He leads me beside still waters. Uh, next slide. I made this next slide. Isaac's got cool. Check it out. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things here. I want you to see what I think he means by this. What does that mean? Some people translate that pure waters because they'll drink out of dirty water. But they'll lead me to the still water. Sheep will not drink out of a running stream. It scares them. They're scared to death. It's got to be a smooth stream. So let's go to the next one, Hannah. Um, so here's an example of a nice little smooth. Okay? He makes me lie down in the green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters. He knows he can't lead it. He's, he knows exactly where he needs to take you. What are those still waters for the Christian? Hey, what are they? You got the you got the the green grass. Now, I'll show you what it is. Check this out. Now the next two slides. If we would have to go ahead and buzz right through. Here we are, early morning, about four in the morning. We start getting dew on the grass. There you are. It doesn't get any stiller than that. That's the stillest water there is. Is dew on the grass. So when a sheep has to get up early to eat the grass and they also get hydrated by eating the dew that's on the grass. What is he saying? The good shepherd knows the value of the quiet time. Of the quiet time. I need to have my quiet time. Have you been missing your quiet time? Early morning, and if you study the biographies of great saints, men and women both, those that have really counted for God and those who have really accomplished something for God have always been those who rose early and spent time with God. First place. God was first place in their life. And that's when you get the dew. That's when you get the still waters of His Word, the green grass and the still water of the Holy Spirit in your life. That's when you're going to grow the most. So are you getting that quiet time and are you getting it early in your day in your life? So again, they... they um, Chew your club, and let's move on down here. Last things I'm going to give you. The, let's look at the last slide, or this next slide. So this is a lesson for dealing with stress. This is something, I, I, I looked at one of these one time, one of these old railroad crossing signs, and I said, right there, is the, that's what's wrong with the human race. We don't stop, look, and listen anymore. We don't stop our frantic pace. We don't ever take the time to look at the beauty around us and the joy and the laughter. I was watching my wife last night. Kaysen was playing, we were playing bull rides or whatever, and he was giggling his head off, and she just closed her eyes and just listened to him laugh. And it just brought joy to her heart. Because you have to stop, look, and listen. And if you listen close enough, you're going to hear God's, you'll hear God's voice in the laughter of a child. You're, you'll hear it in the voice of a Tweety Bird. You'll hear it in the voice of a friend. You'll hear it in the voice of a mate. You'll see it in the Word of God. God will, wants you to stop your earthly activity and all that you're doing, get a quiet place and get alone. Did Jesus ever get alone? Remember when he got in, those disciples got the storm? Remember when he did it? Hey, you guys go get in the boat. I'm going up yonder to pray. I want to be alone. Jesus. 
I want to be alone. There are sometimes I think we need to take our cell phones and go out of it. And you know what? I say that to my college kids, and they just their blood pressure rises. You can just literally see their face get red, and they're they're just all the color drops, and they're like a day without my cell phone. It's like it's like cutting them off of an IV drip. Okay? And uh, but you know what? Try it. Just chuck your cell phone somewhere and just go off and be alone and pray and stop, look and listen. So what is the cure for stress? Security, sufficiency, the provision of the Savior and the, the serenity that He gives. There was a there was a guy that was he was a kind of a, a traveler and he was in the jungles of Africa and as he was going through there he had so much stuff to carry him. And so he just got the natives and he said, hey, I need you guys to help me carry stuff. And I've got to get to X des des destination. And they, they were like, okay. So they carried all of his stuff. And I mean, they packed 100,000 miles an hour. He pushed and he drove and he pushed and he drove and we're going to get there. And by the end of the day, he was like, man, we got farther and we carried more stuff than I ever thought we'd get done. I think we're going to get there sooner than I thought. He got up the next day, and they were all sitting around, sitting in the shade, fanning themselves, eating, drinking, relaxing. He said, come on, come on, we got to go to work. And they go, he said, why aren't you working? Why? Come on, why are you sitting here? And they said, because yesterday we went too fast, and today we're waiting for our souls to catch up with our bodies. <clears throat> this is the human race, folks. This is the reason we're so stressed. Because we don't take the time to stop, look, and listen. And if we don't take the time, He will make us lie down in a green pasture. It'll be green, but He may have to make you. And sometimes I look at people in hospital beds and they're always facing up. They're always looking up. Interesting. Is that the only way God can make us look up sometimes? Put us flat on our backs? So sometimes we need to just go apart before we come apart. Make sure that you are having that quiet time. Make sure that you are noticing, just acknowledging the presence of the shepherd in your life. Father, this morning we just give you thanks that we have a shepherd and uh, he is in control of our lives. And Lord, you do want, you don't want us to be fearful like sheep. You don't want us to be butting heads and be fighting for order and to be top sheep or richest sheep or have the most stuff that we work so hard to get. Uh, Lord, we don't have to be... Um, Lord, I just thank you for the times that you have made me lie down and smell the roses and enjoy life again. Lord, I pray there's anybody here today where they have that frantic pace of the human race and we just are missing it, the journey, that we'll find it in, our, in the presence of our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, for being patient with your sheep and uh, for loving us in spite of it. I pray that there's anybody here today that doesn't know you as their personal shepherd. They're going to wander through this life. Lord, it's so obvious that we need a shepherd who knows what's best for us. I just pray, Father, you would uh, show them that and they wouldn't leave this place today without talking to one of us about needing the shepherd. Maybe we've got wayward sheep. Maybe there's some sheep that have gotten a little close to the fence and they've crossed over and they're over in a barren pasture and they've been nipped at the heels by a wolf and, and Lord, they want back in the, they want back in and close to their shepherd. Lord, I pray you would draw them back. And Lord, for those that are stressed today, I just pray you would help them decompress and let cast all of their care upon their great shepherd because he cares for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.